So, things are looking pretty good so far. What do we want to do next? Part C says, reverse thrust is shot down when the aircraft reaches a speed of, let's highlight this, 36 meters per second. How far, so how far is a displacement question? How far from the point of touchdown, correct to the nearest meter, does this happen? Well, it seems like all we need to do is to very straightforwardly substitute appropriate values into my equation, my model, which I developed back in part B. I'm trying to answer a question at X, so nicely, I already have X being the subject, and what I know is that velocity will be 36 at that point. So I just need to substitute in V equals 36 into here. So let's see what we get when we do that. And this is part C. So I'm going to say when V equals 36, X is going to be equal to 207 plus 5,000 log of, and then this seems to me like a whole lot of calculator work. So let's go ahead and pop this in here first, plus V squared. Uh, sorry, not V squared, I've got a substitute value for V, which is 36, so it's 36 squared down there. I'm going to reach over for a calculator, like so. Okay, let's have a look here. Some old working I was doing there. Alright, so let's have a go with this. This is going to be 207 plus 5,000. I'm going to need my log function here. I've got a fraction in there, and it's 20,000 plus let's make it a bit bigger, 66 squared, and then on the denominator, 20,000 plus 36 squared. All right, what are we getting here? So I'm reading my decimal places as 878.2948 dot, dot, dot. If I go back to the question, I'm pretty sure what accuracy do they want? They want um, correct to the nearest meter. So therefore, down here, I'm just going to say, therefore, I can move that aside. It's going to be rounding down 878 meters after touchdown. That's to the nearest meter. Okay. So, happy times. Just a straightforward use of the model that I got in part, th uh, part B, rather. So, we're finally on the home stretch. Let's have a look at the final part of this question. The brakes alone are then used to reach the taxi speed of seven meters. So if you're not sure what this is referring to, you know, when the plane touches down, um, seven meters per second apparently is the speed that it's happy to sort of just drive around the runways um, until it can, you know, get to the airport terminal and then disembark its passengers. How far from the point of touchdown, correct to the nearest meter, does the plane reach its taxi speed? So when do we get to um, velocity equals seven? Now. This has been tricky, right? As we've gone through, we have um, started with a model that was from uh, 0 to 3, uh, 0 to 3 seconds, I should say, for time. And then as we went into part B, we kind of abandoned that. We knew that we were going to be after time 3. But then what we created was a model that was uh, independent of time. It was a displacement velocity equation that we created. So when we have a think about how this is going to progress, um, you know, even though in part A I said, oh, here's what happens between time 0 and 3, and then for part B, I said, here's what happens after time three. Um, in part D, I don't have a value for like, well, what time is this? I know that the uh, velocity wants to get to seven meters per second, but I don't know when that actually happens. Um, and you can see the question sort of doesn't care about the when, it says how far. This is another X question, another displacement question. So what I'm gonna do to make the numbers easier for me, and you can see as I went through my, my integrations here, right? Um, I had chosen values, I'd chosen my initial value and my, my origin as it were to make my integrations and my constants of integration very easy to evaluate. So I'm going to do something a little bit sneaky here in part D. Because um, the answer to part D doesn't really care about the time from the previous situations, it just cares about the displacement relative to the previous situations. I'm going to do a sneaky thing and reset time. Uh, no, this is not a trick that I'm pulling out of um, a Disney Plus Loki series. This is just I can set t equals zero to be anything, right? Uh, and t equals zero is nice and convenient because it makes my constants easy to evaluate. So what I'm going to do, and I need to introduce this, right? Because I'm sort of breaking the continuity I have from the previous parts of the question. I'm going to say consider a new scenario where, so I'm defining this very, very explicitly, where t is the number of seconds 
And what I'm thinking about is, uh, what defines this particular situation? It's not touchdown anymore. If you go back to the question, um, rather than now saying this T is from point of touchdown, time in seconds after touchdown, I'm thinking about what happens when the brakes alone are used again. So this is when the reverse thrust shuts down, okay? We went from touchdown, um, which, and then the brakes were going, and then we went to reverse thrust, which was part B, and then that was going for some amount of time. And then it says the brakes alone are then used. So reverse thrust is finished, and I just use the brakes to get down to this speed. So then I'm going to explain this as the number of seconds um, after reverse thrust ends. Okay, so now that I have defined this, right, I can then say, in other words, my new time equals zero. Uh, when is that? And the answer is, well, when did reverse um, thrust stopped? And the answer is, if you have a look back at the question, reverse thrust is shut down when the aircraft reaches a speed of 36. That was the whole reason why we found that in part C. So reverse thrust is shut down at V equals 36. So my new time zero tells me that velocity equals 36. And similarly, I also know where this happens, not just how fast I'm going, but part C enabled me to find out that it's 878 meters after touchdown. So I've also got a value for X, it's 878 at least to the nearest meter. So now being that I'm back in sort of the same kind of force situation, the same kind of acceleration situation that I was back in part A, I can say, wait a second, I already know what X double dot is equal to. It's the same negative two without the reverse thrust going on that I had earlier. So I'm going to proceed again and integrate up to um, velocity and displacement in terms of time. Um, I know that seems a bit weird because my whole answer is not in, in, uh, dependent on time, but I need to know what value of time will get me to that particular location. That's the question, right? How far? So I'm going to say um, integrating, uh, I'll go integrating x dt equals the integral of minus two, whoops, you know, dt. And what that's going to give me is a velocity expression. So that's going to be minus two t plus another constant. What am I up to now? I just did Three, so I'm up to four now, C4. And I'm going to use this condition up here. You can see when I put in T equals zero, um, I'm going to get C4, well, I'm going to say T equals zero implies that C4 is equal to 36. So that's just going to be my velocity expression, just substituting that back, minus two T plus 36. And then I integrate one more time the integral with respect to time to get up to displacement, right? So this is going to be integral of all of this with respect to time. That'll give me displacement. Uh, what do I get here? This looks familiar. Minus t squared plus 36t. And then I hope, I think this will be my final constant of integration. So I've got c5 being some other real number. Okay, again, when I put in a time equals zero and you're going to put in this 878, which was where my reverse thrust shut down, I'm going to say t equals zero. That implies that this constant is going to be 878. So what do I got now? A displacement equation. I'll just substitute that back. Minus t squared plus 36t plus 878. Okay, now how do I work out where things are happening? Well, I need to know at what time I get down to, my brakes successfully reduce me down to seven meters per second. So you can see right here, this is going to be, I'll just highlight it for you, this is going to be the equation that allows me to find a t that corresponds to velocity seven. So I'm gonna say when v equals seven, um, I'm gonna have minus two t plus 36 equals seven from my velocity equation. Subtract 36 from both sides, I think that gives me negative 29. T equals, divide that through by negative two, that gives me 14 and a half. I don't really care about that time, I'm just gonna use it to substitute it into displacement. So substituting into displacement, what does that give me? 
something awkward because 14 and a half is a gross number. Uh, x equals negative 14 and a half, that's being squared plus 36, lots of 14 and a half plus that 878. Let's reach for that calculator again. Okay, what do we get here? So, whoopsie daisy, let's put some brackets, 14.5, that's gonna get squared, or would be get squared if you put the 14 in there, plus 36 lots of 14.5, and then what am I adding? 878, so what am I getting here? Of course, I'm getting fairly round numbers because all of the decimals were approximated, in the previous step, um, but that is close enough for me. Again, I'm pretty sure I want it to the nearest meter, so I'm gonna say, in other words, uh, 1,190, because that rounds up, meters after touchdown. That's when I reach taxiing speed. So you can see my final answer doesn't depend on time, but I use time as my stepping stone to get there. So this question, um, number one, it's a bit of a marathon trying to go all the way through. There's quite a lot that you've got to keep in your head. There's a lot of information that you have to tease out as well that's sort of tucked into the question. Uh, but the key thing here, the most tricky thing I think is that's part of this is that the model sort of changes as we define it for different um, domains of time and then for different like places, right? Like this, this is when the reverse thrust kicks in, this is where it shuts down, and you have to have different models that capture you at each of those different points.